First, I'd better check the Monokuma file. The victims were Hifumi, Yamada, and Kiyotaka Ishimaru. The cause of death for each was a blow to the head. It is thought that they were both killed with a similar weapon. That's it? Very strange. Yeah, it's pretty strange. We got way less information this time than before. <sighs> that is no problem. After all, the events of this case unfolded before our very eyes. We should know more about what happened than the Monokuma file could, anyway. Hmm. Maybe. Well, there's something else that's bothering me. Hmm. Someone else has been missing for quite a while. Are you talking about Kyoko? Without a doubt, she has an alibi for when Celeste and Hifumi were attacked. But what if the killer wasn't acting alone? What if they had an accomplice? An accomplice? <gasps> an accomplice? <sighs> what are you doing here? Monokuma appears! Don't be rude. I'm here to answer your question. What question? Yep. You're talking about accomplices, right? I'm pretty sure I explained it before, didn't I? During the first class trial. Speaking of which, I'd like to ask the bear. If there is an accomplice, do they also become blackened? So you ask, and so I shall answer. Each murder is allowed to have an accomplice, but only the one who does the killing will get to graduate. So in other words, two people can work together, but one of them has no chance of profiting from it. Then there's no way anyone would work together, right? In other words... So, basically, you can be an accomplice if you want, but there's no gratification in it. So then... So are you saying nobody worked together this time, either? Hey, um... Sorry, can't answer that. It would obstruct the free exchange of information between you guys. I just want to make sure you don't forget, no matter how much you might assist in a murder... Only one Blacken can graduate! An accomplice gets nothing! In other words... Then we only need to figure out who that one Blacken is that did the killing, right? Just like normal. Well... Okay, okay, let me make, take this whole opportunity to clarify the whole shebang. In this class trial, what you need to determine is... Three. The one true Blacken who devised the murder plot and put it into action! The true Blacken. So just one person. Well now enough for explanifying. Now it's time to the final bat down to the final battle between all of you and the blackened. Good luck to all the contestants. So there can only be one blackened. An accomplice wouldn't benefit. But I can't see any way Kyoko would be connected to this case after all. You may be right. Um, if that's true then Kyoko where are you? However, as long as she's not connected to the case it doesn't matter. Let's get back to the investigation. Indeed. I have absolutely no doubt what that hero is responsible. But for the time being, I suppose it can't hurt to pursue further information. So, um... You know, don't you think we should consider a certain someone a suspect just in case? I'm talking about the murderous fiend, Genocide Jack. <laughs> what? I'm offended! <laughs> you... Why did you... I've been looking all over for you, Master. When I woke up, you were nowhere to be found. You. Anyway, you there, milk sack swimmer girl. Huh? Milk sack? You've gotta be kidding. Why do I gotta be a suspect? What the heck? Well, I mean, you are a serial killer. <laughs> so what? I'm just like a special guest suspect every time? I have an alibi, you know? She's right about that. When we heard Ifumi scream, she was with me. And when the bodies disappeared, she was still lying unconscious in the equipment room. Plus, Taka's body aside, I can't imagine any way she would have been able to move Hifumi's body. Yep. Besides, I calculate every move I make. I'm not going to kill someone when everyone knows what I look like. <laughs> they don't call me the murderous fiend for nothing. What are you saying? That's not the kind of thing you should be bragging about. Let's see. On another topic, shall we post a guard by the bodies like before? We can't have them disappearing again. So then. Hina and I can handle that. You don't mind, do you, Hina? Hmm. Sure, I'd be totally useless on the investigation anyway. It's all clear now. Then that's that. Let's begin. This whole thing is so strange. All but one of us has an alibi, so figuring out who did it should be obvious, right? But maybe it's just me. But I don't think it's going to be as straightforward as it seems. Alright. 
Taka. He'll never move again. According to the Monokuma file, Taka died from a blow to the head. We found Justice Hammer 4 near his body in the equipment room. Is that what was used to kill him? And there's a tarp laid out under his body. Did the killer use this to move Taka's body? That way there wouldn't be any blood left behind while the body was moved. His really big body. I mean, how on earth was the killer able to move someone so big? From the nurse's office where he was discovered to here, the repository. All the way from the first floor to the third, and all without anyone noticing it. How the hell? It's no good, I just don't get it. I can think about it later. For now I have to finish investigating Hifumi himself. If I remember correctly, Hifumi's fatal injury was also a blow to the head. Probably from Justice Hammer 3, which was laying on the floor in the nurse's office. Huh, wait. Something's off about his body. Why am I getting this feeling? Something's different. Something about Hifumi's body in the nurse's office versus his body right now. That's it! His glasses! When his body was in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered with blood. But now they're completely clean. Does that mean someone wiped his glasses off? But who would do that? And why? There are hammers of all different sizes hanging on the wall. Although so th some are more like mallets. Mallets. Could the justice hammers have been designed using these as a model? Either way, all the hammers here have obviously seen a lot of use. They're all covered in debris and chalky stone powder. Wait, for some reason this one hammer isn't dirty at all, and it's wet. Did someone wash it recently? Hmm. There are many aspects to the incident this time. Too many, to be honest. Considering that, it may be good to look back on everything that's happened. So then... Oh. Yeah, let's look back on things. This morning, only four of us met up at the dining hall. Hina, Kyoko, you, and myself. We waited for the others, but nobody showed up. So we decided to go look for them. Hmm. It was around 8 o'clock when we began our search. And soon after we split up, Kyoko disappeared. Hmm. After that, Hina found Celeste in the rec room on the third floor, then quickly came and got you and me. According to Celeste, she was attacked by a suspicious individual and lay unconscious for about an hour. Oh, it's Makoto's spot speaking. In other words, she was attacked an hour before we found her, meaning just after 7 o'clock. Hmm. Based on the picture Celeste took, we discovered her attacker was dressed in a strange costume. It was Robo-Justice. It also became clear this Robo-Justice had dragged Hifumi away. Hmm. After meeting up with Toko and Byakuya, we began searching for the costumed assailant. We found an injured Hifumi in this library on the second floor. We took him down to the nurse's office on the first floor, then resumed our search. But not long after leaving the nurse's office. What's wrong? I saw a shadow, something moving around at the top of the stairs. Based on Celeste's claims, we went back up to the second floor, where we split up and began searching. Then right after that, Celeste screamed. This time she had apparently seen the suspect on the third floor. Hearing her screams, we quickly made our way to the third floor. Celeste! What's wrong? That was a rather intense scream for someone like you. I saw him, the strange costumed man. He ran off as soon as I screamed. I was blocking the stairs, so he headed further down into the hallway and disappeared. Mm. And then... Huh? What was that? That came from downstairs. It must have been... Hifumi, he's in the nurse's office. This is bad. Come on, we have to go back. At that point, we decided to split up into two groups. Celeste, Hina, and I went back to the nurse's office. Meanwhile, you and Byakuya and Toko pursued the suspect on the third floor. And when we got back to the nurse's office... We found Hifumi's corpse, which is also when we heard the body discovery announcement play. I left Celeste and Hina alone and headed back to the third floor to tell the others what had happened. However, 
but at that ta same time we had discovered Taka's body in the equipment room. Which means Hifumi and Taka's bodies were discovered right around the same time. Because I remember hearing the body discovery announcement play right after finding Taka. And that's when I showed up and told you and Byakuya that Hifumi had been killed, right? Then you, me, and Byakuya headed back to the nurse's office, leaving behind Toko, who had fainted. But as soon as we left the physics lab, we ran into Celeste, who just arrived to tell us something very unusual. Hifumi's body has disappeared. <laughs> Sorry. We hurried back to the nurse's office to discover that his corpse was, in fact, gone. And we remembered we had abandoned the unconscious Toko, and rushed back to the equipment room. This can't be happening. Are we hallucinating all this or something? This time, Taka's body had disappeared. So from there, we began our search for both of the missing bodies. And after some time, Celeste told us she'd found the bodies, and we all headed to the repository. And there we'd rediscover the two bodies that had apparently vanished. And that brings us up to now. However... Looking back, things have certainly been very active. If you want to look back at the case again, just let me know. I'm fine any time. Alright, we just want to do that once. So, uh... Hey, um, Makoto, I've been thinking about something. It's about the repository. Huh? What is it? Hmm. After Hifumi and Taka's bodies disappeared, we split up to look around, right? I was really scared, so me and Sakura stuck together. But, and we came right to the repository to, you know, look around. But when we got here, the repository was locked. We couldn't get inside. It was locked. Mm. And we came here as soon as the search started, so there's no way someone could have beat us here. So if that's true, then who locked it? And why is it unlocked now? I wondered the same thing. The door was locked when the search for the bodies began, but now it's wide open. There might be some secret lurking in there. But I'll probably have to leave this area to figure it out. It's a dolly. It doesn't have a handle. I saw this in the art room before. I guess it's used to move statues around. It's kind of awkward, but if you bend down, it's not too hard to use. Ah, oh, but wait. Wasn't this in the equipment room when we found Taka's body? And look at the wheel. There's a blood stain on it. So there's blood on the wheel of the dolly that was moved from the equipment room to the repository. What's the explanation for that? Byakuya, do you think Hiro really did it? I don't see how anyone could think otherwise. When the attacks and murders and disappearances all happened, every one of us had an alibi. And the last thing Hifumi said when he died, yeah, he said Hero's name. In other words... Then there is no room to suspect anyone else. Okay, but if he did do it, why would he hide his identity with that weird costume? Hmm. Maybe he thought that no matter what happened, he'd be safe as long as his face was covered. Because he's the fool of the century, you see. I mean, he is kind of dumb. Do you really think that's enough to explain it? I feel like there's a clue hiding in there somewhere. What? And is that it? That's all that bothers you about the case? Well, no, there are a few other things. Like, why did the killer try to hide the bodies? They probably figured that if we couldn't find the bodies, we couldn't complete our investigation. And if that's the case, we found the bodies pretty easily, didn't we? Again, it comes back to the fact that the culprit was a moron. If that, is that really all there is to it? The other thing that bothers me is, why'd they bother killing two people? What? What? Because all the rule says is, if you can kill someone and get away with it, you graduate, right? So if you're the killer, your number one priority is not getting caught. But killing two people means more clues, more chances you'll get found out. I see. Hold on. Perhaps... I see, so that's what that means. I is everything okay? That's enough. Don't talk to me as if we're friends. Huh? What's with that attitude? <laughs> and you ha But you have my appreciation. Goodbye. Thanks to you, I might have some fun with this after all. His mysterious words hung in the air as he left the repository. He talked as if he'd figured something out. But if he did, would it have killed him to tell me what it was? I think so. If 
through the door that Hina said was locked before. There's definitely a lock on the door, but it can only be locked from inside the repository. I don't see any way to lock it from in the art room. Hmm. The door can only be locked from inside the repository, which makes me wonder. Hina and Sakura confirmed that the door was locked after we started looking for the missing bodies. And the door is designed so that it can only be locked from inside the repository. In other words, when Hina checked it, someone had already gone in the repository and locked the door. When they were done, they unlocked it and left, which is why it's unlocked now. But Hina claims that there's no way someone could have beaten them to the repository. So that certain someone... Hmm, there's gotta be a clue around here somewhere. Maybe I should check somewhere else. There are some places I already know about. First the nurse's office where Hifumi was found, then the equipment room where Taka was found. Okay. I'm gonna check the... the uh, physics lab the equipment room, just because it's closest. And it probably doesn't matter. <clears throat> I'm gonna save. Um, I've been recording for a long time, so just in case I have any issues, I can come back to this point. Huh, this tarp. I feel like I've seen it somewhere before. And just recently, too. There's some kind of tire mark going through the pool of blood in the middle of the room. That reminds me, about the dolly in the repository. There is blood on its tire. Could that blood have come from... here? Which could mean that Taka's body was moved from the equipment room to the repository using the dolly. Both rooms are on the third floor, so that should definitely have been possible. But even if the dolly was used to move Taka's body... What about Hifumi? Hifumi's body was in the nurse's office on the first floor. Even with a dolly, there's no way to get it up to the third floor. That's still a total mystery. Justice Hammer 4, the weapon that was used to kill Taka. The body was moved, but the murder weapon was just left here. I was sleeping right here when the killer carried the body away! I'm super pissed I missed such an ultimately rare event! Okay, well, I think that's all we can explore in there. Celeste, was she really attacked with this Justice Hammer 1? But what the heck is with this thing? So let's go to the first floor. In the nurse's office, right there. What are you investigating, Celeste? I am not investigating anything, precisely speaking. I am simply going around seeing if Hero might be hiding somewhere. Mm. But what about you? <clears throat> oh, you know, I'm just checking this and that. The main thing on my mind is how someone could have moved Hifumi's body. Let's see. How Hifumi was moved, huh? When it disappeared, you were supposed to be in the nurse's office, right? Yes. Correct. 
Hina was not feeling well, so I stayed behind to look after her. But she seemed to be getting worse, so I took her to the bathroom. And when you got back, the body was gone? Mm. We could not have been gone for more than a minute or two, though. Yeah, Hina said the same thing. So then the killer was able to get in and move Hifumi's body in that short amount of time. Indeed. It would seem so. To carry off someone as big as Hifumi in only a couple of minutes is... I can't think of it as anything less than impossible. Justice Hammer 3, the one that was used to kill Hifumi. Someone moved the body but left the weapon behind. A refrigerator. I wonder if there's anything to drink inside. After everything I've been through, I'm totally parched. Maybe just a quick... a quick... peek. A quick peek. A quick pick. There's a bunch of blood packets in here for blood transfusions, I guess. Doesn't help me, though. I'm not a vampire. Mm. Not much else, it seems. I feel like there's more for me to look at here. Okay, well... Just a normal trash can. Oh, wait, so there's something inside. It's too small to be a handkerchief. It's a glasses cleaning cloth. And it's got some kind of cartoon character on it. Oh, but it's also covered in blood. Oh. Oh, did you find something? Yeah, there was a cleaning cloth in the trash can. Huh? A cleaning cloth? And it's all bloody. Whoever this belonged to must have used it to wipe up some blood. But who would need to do something like that? I haven't the slightest idea. Yeah, me either. But I think it might be important. Alright, I think that's the only other thing in there. Hmm. So this is where you were. I've been looking for you. You have? Hmm. I wanted to thank you for what you did. Not that you meant, what meant to, but you ended up making this little game of ours very interesting indeed. Uh, um... You should go to Hero's room. Oh, and let me give you this. This is the note Hero wrote to get us all to meet up, right? Hmm. You remember well. Well, the penmanship was pretty remarkable, so it left an impression. It's all clear now. Anyway, this makes it clear, right? This is a trap. What is? <laughs> <laughs> Things grow ever more exciting. Um, what are you talking about? I've already repaid my debt. I don't owe you any more explanation. Goodbye. Um, so he said to go to Hero's room, but what's waiting for me there? Alright, well, let's go to the dorms. <clears throat> there we go. The door's unlocked? I guess I can go inside. Byakuya did say to go look. It might not be a great idea, but I'm gonna take the punch. The plunge. This is Hero's room. There's all kind of weird stuff in here. Where do you even get it all from? More importantly, he still hasn't turned up. Which means he can't really complain if I don't get his permission to search his room, right? Let's see... I think there's something in the cardboard box. It's blueprints for something and... Some things made out of... looks like cardboard, plastic, and... blaster? Is this robo-justice? And it's in Hero's room! But wait... these blueprints... something about them bothers me. Hmm... Hmm, viewers, what do you think? Ah. Makoto! Big news, big news! What's wrong? We found Kyoko! What? Is she okay? Where is she? Wait, I wasn't done. There's more big news. Second. Robo Justice showed up too. Robo Justice? It's Hero wearing the costume. Okay. 
Anyway, as soon as you can, head to the pool on the second floor. To think Hiro and Kyoko would turn up at the same time. Anyway, I have to head to the pool. I ran off to the second floor as fast as I could. And they're over there. Kyoko, and... I mean... Oh man, I have had the worst day. Hero? Um, Hero? <laughs> yeah, duh. Who else would I be? Um, that's a good question. Huh? What? Why do I look like this? What? Did someone come along and remodel me while I was sleeping? Was it the Illuminati? Right. I found Hero. He was jammed into the pool lo room locker. It looked like he was fast asleep, so I kicked him and woke him up. Don't be me. I still can't believe you kicked me. You could have been a little more gentle about it. Like, I don't know, caress my face or something? What? That's creepy. Anyway, Kyoko, where have you been all this time? You just disappeared all of a sudden, without a trace. There was something I had to check up on. What do you mean? Never mind. I can't never mind. Nothing. Never mind. Hey. More importantly, she says that, but does she have any idea? Does she know people think she might be spying for the mastermind? First of all, Hero, you need to explain to us why you're dressed like that. I mean... Oh, uh, well, I mean, I have no idea. One second I was asleep, don't even know how that happened, then I woke up, and then I was here. Hmm. I don't care, do something about that costume. It pains me just to look at you. Huh? Well, um... I don't know what's up with this thing, but I can't actually get it off! A little help? <laughs> Why would you make something that you can't take off by yourself? You I didn't make this stupid friggin' thing! There's a clasp on the back that's keeping you from turning, getting it off. It looks pretty sturdy. I don't think you can get it off on your own. We don't really have a choice. Let's help him. It took everyone's help, but slowly we were able to get Hero out of the suit. It took a few minutes, but eventually we got all the pieces off. <laughs> oh, free at last! Mm. Isn't it kind of weird how perfectly the suit fits Hero? So then. More to the point, nobody but Hero would be able to wear that costume. Uh, um... Wait, what? Hold on a sec. Honestly. Don't bother trying to act innocent. The blueprints were in your room as well. In other words, it is obvious to everyone that you made this costume. That's true, I saw the blueprints myself. Yeah, me too. Could it be? Then it's obvious! The one who put this costume on and went around attacking everyone... Terrible. ...was Hero! <sighs> Shall we tie him up and gag him? Just the worst. Good idea! We wouldn't want him killing anyone else! <laughs> to tie me up! Hold on, guys. I think that's going a little far. That's right. He may be a suspect, but he deserves fair treatment. Hmm. Yeah, I mean... Um. Attacking? Blueprints? I have no idea what you guys are talking about. What the heck? You can't talk your way out of this. It's been decided. You killed them. Please. What? Killed who? I have no idea what you're talking about. There must be a fake hero running around. What are you saying? You're the only one who can wear this costume. So who else would possibly be the costumed attacker? What the heck? How do you know I'm the only one? Maybe you should try it on for yourself before you convict me. Okay. Fine. If you're going to be a jerk about it, I will. Without missing a bit, Hina started putting on the RoboCost Justice costume. I think it's supposed to be without missing a beat. Huh. See, look. See how loose it is? I mean, come on. I'm blind as a bat in here. Can't see my feet at all. I'm surprised you got anywhere in this thing. I'm telling you, it wasn't me. And not to mention, you totally can't bend at the waist. Seems like a pretty obvious oversight. That's not a very nice thing to say. Hmm? Uh, I, I mean, it's not like I made it. I just got caught up in the moment. Well, either way, now we know for sure, right? I mean, it seems pretty clear that nobody but Hero could have fit into this dumb costume. 
In a huff, Hina took the suit back off again. Oh. Well, now you're all out of excuses. Um. No, see, it's because you're a girl. If it was another guy, then... Makoto, go ahead. Okay. Against my will, I picked up the pieces off the floor and tried putting them on. It's no good. The arms are too long. There's no way I can wear this. See? I told you it was impossible. <laughs> You're absolutely right. It seems this costume was made to fit Hiro's body exactly. But... Then there's another costume. They must have one that looks the same, but, but fits them. Honestly. If you insist on this line of defense, then show us some evidence. The heck? Evidence? <laughs> you claim there is another suit, yes? Then you must find it and show it to us. <laughs> what the heck? Just the worst. Who cares? Hero's the only one without an alibi during this whole thing anyway. Terrible. Which is how we know it was him. <laughs> I mean, is that really true? I have no idea what's been happening. Could someone, like, tell me? She looks like she's lost in thought. I don't think she's in the mood to talk. I'd better leave her alone. Hmm. It's looking more and more like it really was a setup. Oh. I certainly did not expect Hiro and Kyoko to turn up at the same time. Hmm. But where has Kyoko been hiding all this time? I have no idea. And perhaps... perhaps she really is working for the Mastermind. What else would explain her questionable behavior? But... You are quite protective of her, yes? That's because she's helped me out so much up until now. <laughs> if I were the mastermind, that is exactly what I would do to earn your trust. What the heck? Um, if you don't tell me what's going on, how am I supposed to understand? I think I figured out that someone's been killed, right? Hey, Makoto, who was it? Well, two people were killed. Taka and Hifumi. What? what? Two people? Just the worst. Why are you freaking out? You did it. Please. I did not. Wait, hold on. If those two are the ones that were killed... How about that? That's it! I know who did it! So then. You may as well tell us then. Hmm. Taka and Hifumi were fighting over Alter Ego, right? I'm at least 30%. Which means... Alter Ego and or Chihiro must have done it. Correct. I see. That's unfortunate. Oh huh? Unfortunate? What the heck? Stop trying to trick us! Just admit that you did it, okay? Uh, um... I I'm telling you, you got it all wrong. Oh. I know that note! Note? Uh, um... Last night, someone slipped a weird note under my door. And here's what it said. I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. Uh. The last thing I remember is going to the rec room. Then for some reason I fell asleep. Hey. The real killer probably drugged me or something. Just the worst. Not a chance. Oh. No, hold on. He could be onto something. The nurse's office did have chemicals that could do that. Huh? But really? Uh. I told you someone's trying to set me up. A secret passage, a chance to escape. Someone wrote all that to trick me. Even if that's true, you must be one dumb fish to buy every piece of bait that floats in front of you. Yeah. Well, after being trapped here so long, even if you know it's a lie, you still gotta check, right? Yeah. Yo, they preyed on my desire to get out of here. They deceived me. Yeah. I still don't buy it. Don't well, you should buy it. Just a second. Okay, then show us that note. Hmm. With pleasure. I have it right here in my, um, pocket. No way. Looks like I lost it. Oh. Yeah, sure. Please. Please, you gotta believe me. I wouldn't hurt a fly. <laughs> As I said before, if you want us to believe you, you must produce evidence. Can you show us the note? I have no particular issue with what you claim, but if you want us to believe you, give us a reason. Uh -huh. What the heck? For serious? <laughs> now then, shall we resume our investigation? There's no time to waste before the class trial begins. Why do we need to keep investigating? We already know who did it. Why? Why did you kill them? Tell us, Hero. Uh -huh. No, it's like I said. Just the worst. Was it really to get the money Monokuma offered us? Yeah, that must be it. You must be totally broke, and that's why. Please. Wait, that's a false accusation. Someone help me. Just be thankful we haven't bound and gagged you. Hmm. 
If you have time to yell and carry on, you have time to search for evidence, right? Uh, you're right! I need to look for the second suit and that note. Feet don't fail me now! I guess I better get back to guard duty. I was gonna ask Toko, er, Genocide Jack to switch with me. But if she and Sakura got into a fight, we'd have a catastrophe on our hands. Well, bye. One by one, everyone peeled away. Makoto, Makoto do you have a second? Huh? I want you to help me with the investigation. It, would seem... it looks like I got a late start on this one, so I need to make up some ground. Sure, I don't mind helping, but can you promise me something? Later when we have time, will you tell me why you disappeared? Why is that? No. Anyway... Anyway, I need your help. You don't mind, do you? Uh, okay. Shall we go? Thanks. Now then, shall we... shall we? Hey. So, Makoto, first I'd like to examine the corpses. Examine the corpses. I can't believe I'm hearing that from a girl the same age as me. Correct. Dead bodies don't lie, you know. They tell the truth far more easily than the living. Hey. Wouldn't you agree? How am I supposed to answer? Anyway... Anyway, we need to hurry before the class trial begins again. Yeah, you're right. Okay, then, show me where the bodies are. They're in... the repository. But I guess we should head that way for now. Mm. Hifumi and Taka. For a moment, Kyoko seemed to go rigid. But only for a moment. So then. Well then, let's get started. She crouched down next to Taka and without hesitation began poking and prodding the bodies. I knew it. The Monokuma file was right. They were killed using similar weapons. Her movements were so smooth. She was so calm. Seeing how comfortable she was actually made me feel a little more comfortable. Makoto, I found something. You did? You remember the wristwatch Taka always wore on his left hand? He did? <sighs> Are you so oblivious to the people around you? Do you dislike other people that much? No, that's not it. Anyway, so you said he had a watch? So then. Take a look. It's broken. You can see the hands aren't moving, right? It most likely broke when he had his encounter with his assailant. And if you notice, the hands are frozen at just past 6 o'clock. So that would mean the watch was broken sometime just after 6. That's right. But last night, Taka's watch definitely wasn't broken. Hey you! How long were you going to keep us waiting? Taka's irritated voice pierced the air as he stared pointedly at his wristwatch. It's almost 10 o'clock, you know that! Bedtime for all the little boys and girls! In other words... So if it worked at 10 last night, it couldn't have been broken at 6 p.m. Meaning it must have happened at 6 this morning. However... And that's not all. Look at Taka's left hand. He appears to be gripping something. You're right, there's a something white in there. Makoto. Can you try and pry it out? Me? Because... Rigor mortis is already set in. Boys are better suited to this kind of manual labor, right? Uh, okay. As much as I didn't want to, I grasped Taka's cold hand. The ice-cold hand was nearly enough to cause my heart to stop beating. After some effort, I was finally able to free the object from his tightly clenched fist. A piece of paper? Hey. Was that all he had in his hand? Yeah, that's it. Just a little scrap of paper. Doesn't seem like much of a clue, does it? Is that right? I wonder about that. Kyoko then turned to Hifumi's body. So then. Let's check Hifumi's body now. Perhaps he's left us a few clues of his own. So, did you find anything? I did. More than I expected, to be honest. Look at this. A wad of paper? That's right. Hifumi had it hidden on him. Hidden? Indeed. He'd stuffed it in his pants, so I can only assume he'd hidden it on purpose, you see. In his pants? 
Wait, so you... Why is that? It was just his pants, not like his socks or something. I don't know what that means. Hey. Anyway, let's take a look at the paper. Go ahead, Makoto. Open it up. When I think of how it was stuffed down his pants, it's like... It better be important, Hifumi, or I'll never forgive you for this. A note? I found the hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the equipment room at 6 a.m. So... That sounds very familiar. That's it! It's the same thing Hiro said! Then he was telling us the truth! However... Although it's not exactly the same, is it? Uh, um... Last night someone slipped a weird note under my door, and here's what it said. I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. The time is different. Hiro told us that his note said to meet at 1 a.m. The note they wrote to Hifumi asked him to meet at 6 a.m. Is that right? Hold on. Just because Hifumi had the note doesn't mean it was meant for him. Huh? So... Part of it has been torn off, right? I think there's likely some meaning there. There's some meaning to part of it being ripped off? Um, can you maybe explain it a little more? Think carefully. Hey. Why would he have been clutching that scrap of paper so tightly? I, I have no idea. So then. What if it wasn't just a scrap of paper when he was holding it? What if it was something more important? And how would something important like that become a mere scrap of paper? That's what you need to answer. Hey. And while we're at it, I should tell you one other thing. The two victims this time definitely have their e-handbooks on them. So the handbooks had nothing to do with how the murders were carried out. So that there was any reason, not that there was any reason to think they were connected to the killings in the first place. So you're saying I don't have to think about the handbooks this time, right? Is that right? If you didn't have to think about them at all, I wouldn't have gone out of my way to mention it. All I said was that they weren't used to help carry out the murders. There may come a point, however, where a handbook may play a role. A handbook may play a role? I don't think I understand. If Kyoko thinks it's important, I'd better keep it in mind. Are you excited? Are you pumped? It's time for the class trial to begin! Like the bright burst of fireworks. Like the flash of a soul clashing with life and death. And so, with no further ado, everyone please meet at the usual spot. Make your way to the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> See you soon. It would seem... It's unfortunate, but I suppose this is where our investigation comes to an end. You'll have to figure out the rest for yourself and come to the proper conclusion. Yeah, you're right. Shall we go? Well, we'd better get going. Okay. Everyone had heard Monokuma's proclamation and they were gathered by the red door. And as soon as we were all there... Monokuma appears! Hello! 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 He's multiplied? Nope, not multiplication. It just looks that way because of an illusion. I'm moving so fast it only looks like I've multiplied. <laughs> Can you guys tell which one is the real Monokuma? <sighs> Can we just get on the elevator already? Boy. <laughs> You're not playing along, along, along. We're not here to play with you. Okay, okay, okay fine. Hey. Then if Everyone's here and ready to go. Please board the pain train or er, elevator. I'll see you guys down there. Let's go. Okay, then shall we? <laughs> Please. Hold on, I'm not mentally prepared yet. What the heck? You'll never be mentally prepared. You can't run away anymore, hero. You're gonna pay for your sins. What the heck? I told you already, I didn't do it for serious. Mm. That reminds me, did you ever find the other costume or the note? <sighs> um, well, no, but. <laughs> How unfortunate. Then it would seem we have our culprit. <laughs> this isn't the place to talk about it. Save your accusations for when we get to the courtroom. That's right. She's right. Let's get down there first. 
Then the story can really begin. Yeah, good idea. That's right. I have to. I have to do it. I can't let whoever killed Hifumi and Taka get away with it. For everyone who is still alive. And for the two that lost their lives. The one who killed Hifumi and Taka. The one who killed two of our friends. The killer is... Someone right here. I took one last deep breath and exhaled slowly. I began to walk toward the elevator. Once everyone was aboard, the doors closed on their own, and the steel box began to move. The clunking of the elevator kept us company as we fell further and further down. There was no going back. Until we settled all this, we couldn't go anywhere. I'm not sure how long it was before the elevator finally came to a stop. The elevator door slid open, opening up onto a cruel fate. <laughs> when I see all of you gathered together like this, I realize just how few of you there are left. Your school life is slowly reaching its climax. Only because of you. Why? Why are you making us do such cruel things to each other? What, what? Do you really hate me so much? But I'm so cute! Come on. Stop goofing around and begin the trial. <sighs> Don't rush me! Of course I'm gonna start it. I, can n I would never be like, stay tuned for the action-packed class trial after this commercial break! Yeah. I never hold out on you like that! Okay, let's begin! Get to your assigned seats! And so the curtain opened once again. A deadly judgment. A deadly deception, a deadly betrayal, a deadly riddle, a deadly defense, a deadly faith, a deadly class trial. Alright. Finally I can save. Alright. See you guys in the class trial. <laughs>